Mishmash! Hey ya, uh, it's Mishmash, and today I've got a big ass video on painting flesh. All different shades, hues, and conditions. And I'll keep this intro brief because I know you guys want to see the painting tutorials, but before we get into it, I'd really appreciate if you leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more if you like what you see. It helps the channel immensely, and it's a great motivator for me to keep upping my game in terms of better content. Anyway, enough talk, let's get into the tutorial. First, here's a little list of all the paints I used for the tutorial. And I'll have visual indicators for each step. Okay, to start things out, we're going to do a Xenophil Prime over all the melons we're using for both the basic and the more intermediate tutorials. As you can see, I'll be leaving chapters for each part, so you're free to check out each method individually, or just chill and watch me paint for a good while. First head we're doing is basic Caucasian flesh. To keep things simple, we're just going to be using Army Painter's Peachy Flesh. This is one of their best speed paints, and I think it works really well over a Xenothal Prime. And honestly, you could just do it by itself and you could call it done, but we're not going to do that today. We'll then take some Kerberg Crimson and mix it one-to-one -one with Lamian Medium, and we're going to focus this around the edges where the flesh meets the electronics and the recesses of his cheeks and brow. By the end of this video, if you're watching it in full, you'll probably never want to hear the words Kerberg Crimson again because we use it in the majority of all these tutorials. For our next shade, I'm going to be using Druki Violet mixed with Lamian Medium once again. In this, we're going to be focusing primarily into his eye sockets as well as behind his head. We'll also be using this to kind of feather into his cheekbones. For his hair, I'm going to be using Vallejo Model Color Black, and we're going to be highlighting this using Eshin Gray. I was unable to get this on camera, but for his eyes and for the highlight on his hair, we're going to be mixing Vallejo Model Color Black as well as Ghost Gray. When painting eyes, make sure to have a decent amount of water on your brush along with the paint so it flows, but always be aware that using too much water will make it pool really easily. I really should be doing the classic paint the eyes before the flesh, but I'm just too used to doing it this way. As you can see throughout the video with every single miniature that I paint in terms of the eyes, it takes a couple tries to get right. If there's one strong lesson I've learned throughout painting all these years is that patience is key. For his pupils, I'm using kind of a reverse mixture, but still the same paints. I try to keep the pupils the same size to the best of my ability. I could clean up the pupil to make them both smaller, but I have like 40 heads to paint, so I'm just going to paint them a little cartoonishly big.
For his teeth, I'm using a similar mixture for the eyes. And to be excessive, I'm using a little ghost gray to dot the eye. By no means do you need to do this. I know this is supposed to be part of the beginner section. I just got lucky with this footage because I typically don't like painting eyes on camera due to the lack of movement I'm allowed to have. So I figured I'd show it. Initially, I wasn't happy with the teeth, so I ended up using Army Painter's Light Tone to kind of give a yellowed enamel color. It worked out okay, but we'll have other methods to showcase how to paint teeth, and this is probably something I'll tackle in a future tutorial. We'll now be moving on to Basic Pale Flesh. Start by applying Army Painter's Flesh Shade over the head, and this is kind of a classic method of mine. Army Painter's washes are by far my favorite because of their consistency and their opacity. For a good while, this is one of my favorite ways to quickly get poxwalkers done. Once the flesh tone is dry, we'll then again be using our Karaberg Crimson on the electronics cheeks and nose for the mini. We'll then use a little bit more watered down Druki Violet for the eye sockets. I'll then highlight the flesh using Pallid Witch Flesh mixed with Kislev Flesh. And to paint his hair, I'm using some Xandri dust. I'll also be applying this color over his eyebrows very lightly. Because our highlight was so stark, I decided to add just a little light shade of Karaberg Crimson over the entire face.
I'll then be finishing off his hair using a little bit of light tone and some highlighting with elfic flesh. The last highlight was not caught on camera as I tried doing a little experimentation with this face and it failed horribly. <gasps> I most definitely want to do a part 2 to this video, so expect to see this method performed in the sequel. Next I'm doing tanned flesh, and for this I'm using a mixture of warrior skin mixed with hardened leather. I think this creates one of the most natural looking skin tones in the basic section of this video, and because of this I really didn't highlight this head, I thought it looked really good naturally. Again for the recess shades I'm using just a little bit of Caraberg Crimson, but for this head I'm mixing in just a little bit of flesh tone. I considered painting hair on this guy, but I honestly thought that his big bald head looked really good as is. So all the hair he gets to have is eyebrows, and for this I'm using dryad bark in black. To finish off the head, I used a little bit of Mago's purple mixed with some contrast medium, and this is over the stud and the recesses of the face. I apologize for the focus on the camera, I had a hell of a time focusing on any of the miniatures with darker flesh tones. I know the camera automatically tries to grab at the brightest object in frame, so I'll try to keep cognizant of this for the next video. This one is kind of a double whammy and a little bit of a bonus. This is kind of an intermediate Caucasian flesh, and to start things out I'm using Army Painter Warrior Skin. This kind of gives us a reddish Caucasian flesh, and I think this is another example of just how good Army Painter's flesh speed paints are. Like I stated previously, we're going to be doing this step a lot with a little bit of watered down Caraberg Crimson around his face, as well as around the electronics. I'll then be adding some ghost gray to the warrior skin just to make some highlights, and I'll be mixing in some dark reaper for a 5 o'clock shadow as well as some buzzed hair. An equally good option is to replace the dark reaper with some eschen gray, but I just wanted to make this guy look a little bit more aged. So honestly with all these steps you could very easily call this done, and I'm actually calling it done now, but the reason I'm being so hasty with this tutorial is this is more or less a camouflage painting tutorial. Undoubtedly there is not a lot of detail for this miniature's face, but having this amount of detail is very good, especially since we're painting over it. For the paint, I'm going to be base coating using a mixture of Vallejo Golden Olive and Black. I'll then begin making three squiggly lines over the forehead, eyes, and the nose, as well as his chin using Vallejo model color black.
will then highlight over this olive using the pure golden olive, making kind of speckling highlights over the strongest features of the face. I'll then be mixing a little bit of ghost gray with dark gray and doing the same kind of sketchy highlights over the gray areas. And for the head stud, I'm just using a little bit of Iron Warriors and a highlight of Runefang Steel. And with some extremely limited steps, you can make some really convincing face paint. It's totally fine if not encouraged to leave a little bit of the flesh showing underneath the paint. It just adds to the realism. This next example is for dead flesh for cyborgs and iron hands. We'll start with a mixture of Drakenhof Nightshade mixed with Army Painter Flesh Tone. Around a 3-2 mix. And be sure to mix in some Lobby and Medium. Coat the entirety of the pale white base coat and give it a good while to dry. We'll then shade the eye socket as well as some of the recesses using lightly watered Drakenhof Nightshade. And to shade the electronics, I'm using a combination of Drakenhof and Karaberg Crimson. To highlight the flesh, I'm using a mixture of Pallid Witch Flesh and Ghost Grey. I'll be very diligent and gentle with this highlight, but I'll also be using it to dot on more pale areas of the skin. I then decided to use a tiny bit of watered down Karaberg over the eye socket, and just a little bit over the cheek. I would then base coat all the metallic areas using Vallejo model color black. I'd then go over using Iron Warriors, and I'd finish it off with Runefang Steel. I know I mentioned this recipe earlier in the tutorial, but I figured I'd be thorough and actually show you. We'll now be doing more advanced Caucasian flesh as well as scarred flesh. To start this guy off, I'm using Cadian flesh tone, and it does take a little bit to establish the color, but that white undertone helps a lot. This is a super smooth paint.
We'll then be shading the flesh using Army Painter's Flesh Tone, and I think this paint is actually better suited than Reichlin Flesh Shade. And next, you get the pattern. We're going to be using some Kerberg Crimson, but this time we're mixing in just a little bit of flesh tone, and I'm watering it down. Keeping the red tones on the healthy flesh makes the scarred flesh pop out more. I would be adding several layers of this watered down wash mixture. Keeping it in thin layers helps me have more control over it, and this face in general has super sharp facial features, so I figured adding a little bit more flesh to make them pop out would look better. Now to work on that scarred flesh. I'm using Kerberg Crimson and I'm not thinning it down at all or mixing it. I really want this to be red. We're going to be painting over this however, and I'm more or less using this as a guideline for that step, but I'm also using this color to give us a little bit of a darker undertone. Now I'm going to be highlighting the healthy flesh using a 2 to 1 mixture of Cadian Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh. I'm basically just gliding this over and you can already see just how nicely this revitalizes the color on the flesh. This guy's facial structure really helps us out because the sharp features do a lot of the legwork in terms of making the flesh pop out. I then lightly highlight this mixture over the scarred flesh, but I would be quick to kind of blend this color with some Screamer Pink. Because Screamer Pink is such a strong color, it only takes a little bit to drastically influence a good transition to damaged flesh. You can see that my highlights are really large in this area, and you could most definitely just paint this over as a base coat, but I find the previous steps add on to the overall look. We'll then be coming back in with Kerberg Crimson, and I'll be sure to make this settle more so in the recesses of the scarred flesh. I'll try my best to really wick away at the excess, and just to make sure that it doesn't completely coat over this area. Back to the healthy flesh, I'm using a mixture of one part Cadian flesh tone to three parts Kislev flesh and I'm once again just gliding this over the highlights smoothly. I decided to leave this guy just completely bald. I just feel like having a huge scar on your face and no hair at all makes you all the more intimidating. Now back to highlighting the scarred flesh, I'm using the exact same mixture as I used previously, but I'm just adding in a little bit more Screamer Pink. I think you can kind of get away with having varying levels of pink, much like real scars, and just, you know, due to results of varying levels of infliction, how deep the wound is. So just having varying levels of pink on the scar makes it look more realistic in my eyes. And after doing so, I'm calling the scarred flesh finished.
to finish the normal flesh, I'm using Kislev Flesh Pure and Simple. Again, I'm just flicking it along the strong features and focusing on the flat parts of the shiny bald noggin. I'll also be watering it down significantly and just kind of blending it over the top of the head. And this just pulls all the colors together. Overall, I'm really happy with how this turned out, and I think this effect is very versatile for any kind of scar you want. I think you could very easily substitute this for a chaos inflicted face as well. Up next we have salamanders, which have a undoubtedly unique color scheme. To start things out, I'm using a base coat of Vallejo model color dark gray, and I'll be sure to apply two thin coats. Initially, I wanted to leave just a little bit of the white undertone peeking through, but I thought it looked better with an opaque finish. I'll then add a shade of Nuln Oil over the entirety of the flesh. For highlighting, I'm using a little bit of Vallejo model color black with ghost gray, and I'm just building up these highlights to the raised points on the skull. I think this is much more of a visual learning thing rather than me verbally explaining what I'm doing. I'm just basically building these colors up on the raised edges of the head. And for the final highlights, I'm being very stark with this mixture. Reason being is that we're going to be shading over this. I think because salamanders have such a mystical look that really exaggerating these details for the ashy flesh is really fun.
For the wash, I'm using Nuln Oil with just a little bit of Druki Violet mixed in. And at this point, I'm quite happy with the flesh. I think the stark highlight and shade method works better for heads that don't have the natural molded scars like the Salamanders upgrade kits have. But now we're going to be moving on to the eyes, and for this I'm using some Vallejo Burnt Red. With this color you can kind of get away with letting it spill over the eyelids, but don't let it stray too far. I'll then be finishing off the eyes and the head itself using a little bit of orange flare from two thin coats for the pupils. I'm quite happy with how this one turned out. I think salamanders are very unique because it seems like everyone has their own method of painting them. I've certainly changed it up several times throughout my years of painting them, but ultimately this is my favorite method thus far. This next flesh tone is inspired by the white scars, so I'm going for kind of a Mongolian-esque tone. I would argue that it's more akin to a Nepalian flesh tone, but whatever, I tried, leave me alone. Anyway, uh, I will say this now, the base coat that I used for this is very weird. We're gonna be using a little bit of Warboss Green mixed with Tau Ochre. And to be quite frank, this looks very goofy and borderline offensive, but please trust the process. I would say a very good alternative is XV88, but apparently my XV88 uh, got dried out, so that's on me. To then shade the flesh, I'm using a combination of Army Painter Flesh Tone with Caraberg Crimson. I'll also be adding in just a little bit of Lamian Medium, just to thin it down a little bit. Once our shades are dry, I'll then be highlighting the flesh using a bit of Tau Ochre mixed with Kislev Flesh. And as you'll see, I'm basically upping this mixture closer and closer to pure Kislev flesh. I think I went a little excessive with the amount of steps where I just kept highlighting up and up, but I really got lost painting this face and I had a lot of fun doing it, so I regret nothing. Do keep in mind that a lot of the ratios are mostly accurate. With blending, it's kind of hard to estimate the amount of this to this, but I think my representation is pretty accurate. For future tutorials, I'll be sure to keep my palette on camera when I'm blending. I'll be adding some rose to his face, and to this mixture of Tau Ochre and Kislev Flesh, I'm introducing just a little bit of Vallejo Game Color Scarlet Red.
For the lips, I'm adding just a little bit of Bugman's Glow to the previous mixture, and here you can see the blend pool I'm using for the miniature himself. For the eye sockets, I decided to use Mortarian Grime mixed with Lamian Medium. My only issue with this is it left a very glossy finish despite Lamian Medium typically leaving a matte finish, so I opted to use some satin varnish when I was done painting the head. For the final highlight over the flesh, I'm adding just a teeny bit of Tau Ochre to my Kislev flesh in a 1 to 5 mixture. I'm kind of being rough with this highlight as I kind of want to make little scratches over the flesh. And for the service stud, I'm just using some black, following it up with some watered-down Carabird Crimson to kind of give it an irritated skin effect. And I'm just using the same method as I used previously for the metallic parts of the stud using Iron Warriors and Runefang Steel. I really had a lot of fun painting this head specifically. This flesh tone is not something I've ever attempted before, so kind of winging it was really fun. It didn't really feel like a formula that I had previously made and I experimented with a lot of shades, and there were some things that I liked and some things I didn't like. You can see here this is before I added satin varnish, and it just looks like he's on the verge of a public meltdown. <laughs> Also a little shout out to Lizard of Doom for suggesting painting white scars for this tutorial. If you haven't, go check out his channel, he's got some great content. We're now going to be painting a dark flesh tone. We'll start this by base coating over with Rhinox Hide, and we'll shade over this using a mixture of Nuln Oil 1-2 with Army Painter Flesh Tone. To begin highlighting, I'm going to be using Doom Bowl Brown and making rather stark highlights. I am also being sure to water this color down to blend it slowly into the Rhinox hide. Again, I apologize for how poorly the camera focused, it just refused to focus on darker flesh tones. But as you can see, over time this blend of the Doom Bowl Brown leaves a really nice color, and then we're going to be mixing Screamer Pink with Cadian Flesh Tone to paint the lips. I'll then add in more Cadian Flesh Tone and kind of make these vertical lines over the lips just to add some texture.
crimson, and we're going to want a very slight red hue across the face. We'll then do the exact same thing with Army Painter Flesh Tone, and as you can see, I'm wicking away at the top of the head just to keep it as shiny as possible. For the beard, I'm using a mixture of ghost gray with a tiny bit of dark gray. I'm making sure to keep my mixture good and thin so I don't obscure any details on the beard. This next part will be a lot of blending, so we're starting out with Scarlet Red and Kislev Flesh. I'm going back and forth adding in each of these colors to leave his cheeks a healthy rosy tone. I'll then go over with Kislev Flesh over the sharper areas and the top of his head. This is good and thinned down as sort of a pseudo glaze. For the lips, I'm using Screamer Pink and mixing it with some of my Kislev Flesh. As I'm going along with this, I'm slowly adding onto the rosy flesh, making sure to tone it down whenever it gets too red. If you don't enjoy blending, then you'll have to have a lot of patience for it, but if you really enjoy blending, like I am now, it's also detrimental to enjoy it too much, because I definitely spent way too much time painting these cheeks. That sounded weird. For his tongue and lips, I'm adding in some Screamer Pink and I'm just mixing it in with some of the Kislev Flesh. And as you can see, I'm being kind of heavy with the rosiness on the cheeks. And I'm just basically using Kislev Flesh to water it back down with a glaze. This is very much a rinse and repeat cycle. And as you can see with these final highlights of Kislev Flesh, some of them are a little streaky, and I wanted to make scars, but I wanted to showcase the buzzed hair again, and more so on camera. Anyway, 
Once I'm done with that, I'll be adding the same mixture as I did for the beard for the eyebrows. I want these to be big, bushy, and beautiful, and I'm going to highlight over the eyebrows using Ghost Grey, and I'm going to lightly wash them using Nold Oil. To finish painting the top of his head, I'm going to be mixing Kislev Flesh with Dawnstone. I'm doing the same buzz cut as I did earlier with one of the previous heads, but I figured I'd get this more so on camera just to give you a good example. I think this method is very suitable for anyone that's just getting into painting faces. This method is definitely something that got me more comfortable with painting flesh on miniatures. For a long time, a lot of my marines just had their helmets. Which is probably for the best when it comes to being smart, but whatever. But once I finish the head, I'm calling this guy done, and I think he looks jolly indeed, just in time for the holidays. And no, I didn't just do this because Christmas is coming up. Well, kind of. But keep your eyes peeled for this guy in the future. And that's all I have for ya. I hope this video was enjoyable, and I really hope I helped inspire you for your future minis. This video was a lot of work, and I really had to push hard to get it out, but I think it was worth it. And thank you to everyone who left suggestions and voted for the video itself. It helps a lot in terms of direction for the channel, and it helps keep me on track for all the ideas in my melon. Anyway, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you liked what you saw, share it with a friend, and remember to mishmash, kitbash, and paint some fantastic miniatures. And you're gonna. I promise. See ya. Wehehe. <laughs>